Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I cannot claim to make three videos in one month. It is now uh, May 1st that I am recording this. Very unfortunate, but I had some ideas in mind and some new cards I wanted to test. So I threw together a list, literally have not played a math with it yet, and we are going to see how it performs. But I wanted to kind of explain my thoughts and where I'm coming from. So first things first, uh, there is a new card from Strixhaven that is through some like weird quirks. It's not legal in modern yet. It's like a preview card. It will become legal in modern on uh, in June when Modern Horizons 2 releases. But because it is a magic card that exists it is currently legal in Legacy, so we kind of get to experiment with it early. And I've been playing this in a couple shells, and it's been pretty impressive for me. I actually just got done listening to the 100th episode of the Everyday Eternal podcast. It's a great po podcast if you like Legacy, you should definitely check it out. But one of the things that came up in that podcast was how it took people a really long time to kind of adopt Ponder as like a staple for of in all their decks. And this might be a bold prediction, but Abundant Harvest to me has felt very close to that power level, which, you know, let's break down what the card does and... Um, kind of go from there so it says you know choose land or non-land and then you basically flip over cards from the top of your library until you reveal the chosen card type and then put it into your hand which sounds very uh you know bland which i understand <laughs> that you read this card and you think oh it doesn't seem that good like it seems fine and that's kind of how I felt as well. But the more I've been playing with it, the more it has impressed me. Just the fact that this can't miss as a land drop is incredibly powerful. It does come with some deck building restrictions. You basically, you if you are relying on this to be a land, you don't really want to play a lot of like colorless mana sources or like utility lands in your deck because then you could hit that and it's basically a whiff and then you kind of lose the game quickly if you don't uh, draw another land. But if you are in the type of shell that doesn't really have that much use for that many colorless or utility lands, this is an incredibly powerful effect. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, to shine a spotlight on this. But other than that, we have a kind of deck that was like sort of a thing uh, around, you know, back in February before the ban announcement where some of the Snowco decks were playing um, like Hole Breacher and uh, some number of days I'm doing as an alternate win combo or an alternate win con basically. And this build kind of fell off after the, uh, after the bands, you know, I think part of that was that Oko did a lot for you. And so you kind of had room to play around with some alternate stuff. Whereas now, because you don't have Oko anymore, you need more of the cards in your deck to be like doing proactive things. But we're going to try this out again. And I think the, the thing here is that I'm only playing one copy of Days and Doing, and I'm playing other uh, cards that kind of synergize with uh, Narset and Holbreacher in, you know, a powerful way, but also are more, you know, reasonable cards in their own right. So I'm playing one copy of Deck Fiedon and one copy of Prismari Command. Uh, so the way these synergize with Narset and Hole Reacher is that they have modes that can make the opponent draw two cards and then discard two cards. Um, so this is a mode on Prismari Command, and then also uh, it's a mode on Dak Fade. And, and so if you do this with either of these cards in play, uh, you know they can't draw more than one card per turn, and that will have to start discarding cards. Other than that, I have one Quandrix Apprentice. I think 20 lands is a little bit iffy for... You know, this card to be like stellar, which is why I'm only playing the one of. But this does also synergize with the looting effects on these as well, where if you have a few extra lands in hand, you can loot them away. Uh, 
And other than that, it's kind of like a very standard Bant control style deck. Well, oh, sorry, technically it's it's four colors because I have this small red splash and I have some red cards in the sideboard. And I'm using Abundant Growth kind of as the you know facilitator for that sort of thing. Uh, you know, helps set up my mana. And I've been testing four color decks for a little bit with Abundant Growth. It seems fine. It seems reasonable. And then I think Harvest is like, you know, occasionally extra color fixing, although it's certainly, it's less reliable as color fixing. It's much more reliable as, you know, just hitting your raw land drops. Um, other than that, you know, one copy of Terminus, I think plays really well with all the three mana Planeswalkers. It's just like a solid four mana play. And then I hate playing a colorless land alongside Abundant Harvest, but I think you need one non-Uro way to win a game in your deck. And so uh, Gaia Reach plus Narsa or Hole Breacher is a lock. You just activate this in your opponent's upkeep and then they can't, you know, they're locked out of their draw step and this works well after you, you know, days in doing them. So this is what we're going to try out today. Uh, and then, you know, I'm going to take you through a three game set as usual and kind of focus on this card and then focus on if this sort of thing feels like it's, uh, you know, still good enough to be doing in a post Oko world. So yeah, let's get to the games. All right, we are here for round one. Um, this hand seems fine. We have good mana. With Abundant Growth, we can turn to Growth an Island, so it's safe from Wasteland. And then we can leave up Foster Storm on turn one, which is really nice. And obviously we have Force of Will, it's always really good. Force is basically, like, especially on the draw, just like always the card you want to see in your opener. It means that like, no matter what funny business the opponent might be up to you have insurance and then this is actually a really good card to draw because uh, if the opponent is on something fair it's just like the perfect blue pitch card and if it's unfair you like having a second force of will So, I think we can get a Tropical Island here. I guess it's our only option. Huh? So, we can get it. Uh, it's also what we're going to get. <laughs> and we could, like, growth up this as well, but I think holding up Floss Storm is generally better. We've got nowhere to be. Looks like our opponent is on some sort of Esper deck. Don't quite know what they're up to. Third Force is probably as good a draw as any. Just gonna growth up this land. So I think we just let this resolve and then sorts it. And if they force, I think I'm in a fluster storm. Uh, they did not force. Just because it's nice to get the two for one off fluster storm. I don't know if it's a good or bad draw. 
If they have another hold reacher, obviously it's very nice to have an answer to it. Certainly letting that one go. So it looks like they're on like some sort of Esper mid-range deck with hold reachers. Just as like a good card, which I agree it is a pretty good card. Uh, So I think we want to leave the Tundra in the deck so that we can fetch for a white source here. So let's just get a Valk. Because if they have another Hold Richer, obviously I want to be able to Swords it. And it does kind of seem like that's what they have, just given... They passed with three mana up. This is the one downside of Hold Reacher is that it's a very telegraphed card. Um, I actually am going to fluster this. Fluster's kind of burning a hole in my pocket. Uh, yeah. Let's get the Tundra. And it would be nice to uh, cycle this arrow, gain some life, next turn escape it, dig deeper into our deck for our combo cards. Deferi is a great pick up here. It works really well with the abundant growths. And having forcibles to protect it, obviously very good. Well, do have to force this. It's too good, I think. If they force back, it's like awkward. I think I just have to force pitching to fairy. If their last, you know, thing was double force, double blue card, um, then we're in a bit of trouble. It was not. Uh, I'm going to save the harvest for next turn. I could take it as a land, but then if I miss on a blue or green source, it's very bad. Uh, green. So one, two. So this deck doesn't have loam, which means it's very trivial to <laughs> exile uh, all the lands when you're escaping arrow. It's just the spells that you would want to bring back with the Mystic Sanctuary. And if this gets swords, you know, it, it's perfectly fine. At that point, it was a three for one, so I can't really complain. Uh, that's fine. Alright, so I think this is just an apprentice turn. Uh, so blue, green. And these synergize nicely together because, you know, say I wasn't sure if I needed a land or not, I could see off the apprentice trigger if I would find one. Hmm. Alright, well, looks like they're going to snap swords. Uh, I do get to swords the Snapcaster Mage in response, which is really nice because it's another Apprentice trigger. As long as one of these hits, it's like a solid uh, card advantage proposition. Now, I do only have 20 lands in this build, like I said. Okay. Uh... And then I think this wants a spell. 
and then I could just put harvest on top and just like bring any spell to my hand. I kind of don't mind that actually. So it's just like guaranteeing that I draw a spell next turn instead of a land. I'm kind of down for that. We seem to be at relative parity, obviously two cards, two. Um, getting to untap there is very good. Uh, given that we can untap, we have such a good turn lined up with a... Uh, oh, I should have done this in upkeep, huh? Just because now if they have Hold Breacher, they get to eat the... Uh, Quaddle draw trigger. So this, this might have been foolish. Uh, and now I'm just like deathly afraid of whole breacher, basically. Uh, so I'm going to name non land. Days on doing. <laughs> All right. Well, worst comes to worst is a pitch card. And I basically just like, it's going to be tough because they have five mana, but I'm going to try and like save the brainstorm for when, well, one, it's a little later in the game and I know what I want to shuffle away. That's fine. But then two kind of when they aren't representing Hope Reacher. Like, I think they probably would have done it in response to this, but sometimes people wait and try to get like a more, like a juicier target, like a brainstorm. Um, right, well, I think with the second brainstorm and a force in hand, I kind of can't wait. Uh, huh. So I can lead on Dak and then steal this. Next turn, Narset days. I kind of like that. So I guess we do this. This will protect this from discard. And then. And if they count on this, I'm going to let it go, just because Narset plus days and doing is the price. It's fine. Um, I don't have enough mana to do both things, though. Uh, I think that's okay. I'm just going to try to resolve Narset next turn. I could brainstorm at an end step if I need to, and then just like basically draw the Narset plus the land in the next turn cycle. Well, I don't really want to deal with that one. It's possible I should have pitched this because if Narset doesn't survive, then I don't get to keep it, basically. Or it's just, I completely just like word fumbled that. If Narset doesn't survive, this card's not very useful, but I guess it pitches to Fawn, so I take back that it's not very useful. Uh, and I'm going to leave this. Because I would much prefer to pitch this to Fawn, so I get to cast the days I'm doing. I definitely would not mind drawing a land. Next turn. 
next turn. Hmm. I'm going to lead on Ponder. All right, well... All right, I think I'm just going to do this. Okay, cool. It just kind of, it wasn't, it's a little hard to explain, but it just kind of felt like they had nothing. And if they like wasted their whole turn with a force of will on the days I'm doing, I still felt like pretty ahead. So there was just like a very big upside and then not a big downside. Um, so I think I'm just looking for a wing con now that plays. So one, two, three. Uh, I guess I'll lead on harvest. Um, or do I want to get the ice fang down? Yeah, let's just do that. And I'm going to let them draw first. Because I played out a card, basically. Uh, I'll get rid of the mountain. Should I have more lands to fetch? Okay, good. Like, basically, when they're down to one card in hand or zero or sorry one or zero cards in hand then you want to do it in their upkeep all right let's just grab a spell here Harvest into harvest. Okay. Uh, I think I have enough to play out this land. Having the force is just like insurance for whatever. The last card they play ends up being is pretty nice. So at this point, we have won the game. It's just a matter of like actually ending in time. Uh, and we're just looking for Uro here, basically. Um, one, two, three. We have enough to play the front half. I mean, I guess there'd be like some chance that I deck, but I think we have enough time here. Awkward. Um, 
this one. That might have been a mistake. Probably should have discarded the Ponder. Because if they like some somehow, somehow, somehow kill Narset. That's a good one too. Speeds up the clock by a turn, I think. I don't think I have any lands to fetch left with this. To be honest, I threw this mana base together pretty quickly. Uh, so I'm less familiar with it. It's probably some like small improvements to make. We kill in two turns right now. So I'm actually not going to show them that I play Hope Reacher. I'm just going to flash in the Coatl and step. And... Can I flash in both? I can. I will cast the Force of Negation that they know about. And then I really want to kill them with Prismari Command, but there's no reason to. And then again, I need to start thinking about Clock. There's just so much game actions that must be taken with this deck. <laughs> I'm not even going to attack with error just so I don't have to click with the triggers. Okay, so it looks like the uh... Queen's Gambit deck, or basically it's the uh, Esper midrange with a small red splash for Queen Marchesa and then like some Power Blasts in the sideboard. So let's think, how do we sideboard? Well, in any midrange battle, I like Clothis. I like Relic, I like Carpet, I like Veil. And then I like having these cards. This one I'm not sure about. We'll put it in the maybe pile. I think this is bad. Uh, I'm going to trim on Force of Negations. I don't know if I should trim on Plows because if they showed me a whole Reacher, they could have more than one. So it'd be really, really bad <laughs> if I got Hold Reacher in general. Like this deck is just a lot of cantrips and some removal. So I think I'm going to leave those in. I'll trim a force of will. I think I want all the lands and all the harvests. Man, three more cuts. Three more cuts is so many cuts. It's possible that they have so much interaction that this card is not good. Like it's only good with one of these guys in play and with them having Pyroblast, that's just not that likely to happen. And then I know I said that I don't want to die to Hole Breacher, but I think that with Swords and Pyroblast and a couple of Forces and Prismari Command, it's a fairy to like bait it out. And the fact that it's a pretty telegraphed card I think I'm fine. Cutting one. We're gonna try it. And then we're gonna try this too. They have some basics, I know, but this could take them off red or like set them down a couple lands, basically. It could be wrong. It's an experimental card. My thought is that 
with Carpet of Flowers, it's like a card you can bring in against Elver and try to resolve. Um, we'll see how much merit there is to that. And I actually think I'm going to play out the relic. I guess they can't hymn me this turn, so I'll probably just end up eating the ponder. But if they hymned me, I would probably wait till end step to use this, just so that I guarantee can protect the arrow from like a surgical extraction. It's like one of the biggest things about relic in your Uro decks is that it can protect your arrow from surgical extraction, in the sense that like the rest of the arrows remain in the deck, which is really important because you don't play that many wing cons. And if they leave up three mana, I'm definitely not going to play the Coatl because it represents Holbreacher. So if they tap out for something, obviously it's different. So now, so usually what it's better to do, uh, I'm actually going to do this now. So we're going to get Valk. Uh, this gives us all four colors, which is nice. I'm going to do this now because Hold Breacher's down, and then if they Pyroblast it, um... Uh, it's actually kind of awkward if I need to sort something this turn, but whatever. Uh, if they power blast it, the Flossus Storm would have been a two for one, which would have been nice for sure. And now we're just like on the board a little bit, which is good. I'm just going to do this now. Clothus is a pretty good card. Makes me feel a little awkward for exiling all their shit, but I still think it's worth it. Um, this makes Hole Breacher a lot more dangerous, though. So I think I'm going to try and get all my cantripping out sooner rather than later. I probably just want the fifth land. And I can shuffle away like one of the sorts of flushers. So yeah, I will do this. All right, so I guess we both draw a card. Um, in general, I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm going to brainstorm this turn. Oh, they F6 to that. Interesting. Um, I'm still going to shuffle away some of the cantrips. Like, I just think it's... Now I could... I think I'm actually just going to go for Uro. It lets me. Oh, well, these are bad. Develop my mana a little bit. Like playing closest one turn earlier versus later is only a drain for two. Like that's not that important. Um,
honestly, this is not bad for me at all because what I was thinking about is like, okay, I'm going to escape Earl this turn. They're going to power blast it. And then like most of my entire turn is wasted. Um, but now... I get to develop my board a little bit. Huh, that's very interesting. I think I don't do that this turn. All right, what I'm going to do is green, red. Yeah, I think I would wait until Teferi's on three before I go to Power Blast it. Unless there's like a turn where I'm anticipating like having to floss or something, which is not this turn. <laughs> I'm very completely okay with this two for one. I'm going to start with Eating the swords. Hmm. So the awkward thing here is that they're like representing hardcast force of will on this to fairy. I'm going to lead with a nice vein quad. Like they're representing Hardcast Force while they're also representing Hole Breacher. Uh, I guess they don't have Hole Breacher. Um, I kind of don't want to tap out. I'm gonna do this. And then now I'm just going to leave up Fluster and Coatl and everything. But basically, I don't want to tap out ever because um, if I leave up the cycle, they can never drown in the lock me, which is really good. Um, all right, I'm going to Fluster this. If they spend their whole turn flashing back the Seven's Reclamation, I will crack the Relic. Uh, and if they don't, Clothis will just eat it. And I'm completely fine with the time walk there. What I would probably do is fetch for Sanctuary, put this on top of my library, and then cycle Relic. Um, just so that I can play Teferi next turn with backup. All right, now I just get to eat this. I think I'm fine just holding up mana this turn. Obviously, the fairy is valuable. And, like, getting it and playing it and bouncing this would be good. But. So I'm just thinking about like, should I get back Lost to Storm here? So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is get back a Mystic Sanctuary. I'm going to put Fluster Storm on top. I'm actually going to use the 
Squaddle. Uh... I guess I should really start uh, focusing on my clock, huh? Right. I will leave the graveyards intact. Uh, and I guess I should just do this now. And that's like not too unexpected that they had an answer. Like they've just been sitting here doing nothing with their turn. Um, but this relic has basically like traded with two surgicals and is still here to potentially draw a card later in the game. And it also kind of prevented them from uh, flashing back to Seven's wreck. Like it's been very good. I am going to target the brainstorm. And let's just quickly play to fairy. The fact that they had to dig with their brainstorm for interaction here is nice because, like I said, they power blast it now, Veil will still cycle, which is good. Whereas if they just had the power blast in their hand, Veil would not cycle. So this is a neat trick you can do now. This doesn't counter to fairy because it's an intervening if. Okay. So at this point, they go down to three of Clothis, two off this, and then uh, Command kills them. So we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to worry about anything because it's a fairy. Opponents use the writing on the wall. Turn nine, no death touch. Uh, I do think that's one downside of this deck is that it's a little bit difficult to turn. Like you have to be very determined if you want this thing to have death touch. Um, you know, you only play three basics and that can make it harder to cast your spells, obviously, if you're fetching basics. But in a lot of matchups, death touch is not super relevant. I think this is one of them, so I felt fine fetching my duels, obviously, uh, against, like, Delver. So the, the nice thing is there's, like, a... I'm trying to figure out, like, a, a nice way to say this, but in... Okay, so in the matchups where that touch is important, 
on Coatl, like those are very frequently wasteland matchups. So you already are incentivized to fetch your basics early on anyway. So there's kind of like a nice little effect there where in the matchups where this doesn't matter, uh, your basics don't matter. And in the matchups where this matters, your basics matter. So uh, I'm not too, too worried about this kind of small anti-synergy because uh, I would be trying very, very hard to get basics in most of the matchups where I want to touch for this card. So I don't have to worry about like drawing it on like turn six and be like, oh no, I don't have to touch. Uh, anyway, that was the game. Really good game. A lot of back and forth. Uh, I think our deck is a little bit better set up for this just because we have Uro. Um, and then obviously Clothis is really strong too. But that being said, I do think we navigated it pretty well with uh, leaving the Relic up for Surgical and using it to counter Drown and then just sequencing well. Uh, where it's like we could have taken some risks with like how we sequenced our turn, but we played it safer. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we'll be back for round two. All right, we're back for round two. It's the next morning. It's a beautiful morning. I'm stuck inside making you know content for you because it's so much I care about you guys. This hand seems reasonable. It has force of wills. It says force of negation, so it's a little iffy. Um, but. Uh, I'm going to let this happen just because I have the answer in hand. This might be really loose, but because I don't even have necessarily the mana for it right now. Um, I'm just going to die a quick death here, huh? That's what it's looking like. Yeah, maybe I should have forced it just in case I draw. But I didn't really want to pitch any of these cards. This is not good. Um... I don't really care about that one either, but... I guess I'll force it. Well, I guess I'll do this on the off chance that I draw an extra land. I'm happy I forced <laughs> the Chalice now. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's reasonable to let this resolve, given that you have the answer in hand. You really only need one land in the next three draw steps. Unfortunately, we missed on that. Uh, so this one, obviously, I have to force as well. I'm gonna. I'm behind here, so I'm just going to hope that I can get off this combo, basically. Uh, well, they may not have anything going on. I guess we can keep playing. It's a rough because it's like their draw is not very good, but we missed the like. 85-ish percent chance of finding a land in four draw steps. Uh, which makes our decision look bad, but I'm still reasonably convinced that it was the correct decision. Okay. So I'm going to uh, 
get an island so that these have death touch. Then I will uh, make myself a treasure token, destroy this artifact. Uh, this gives me the white mana to swords this. I just don't want this to untap because um, then they would draw, you know, two extra cards. And obviously they're looking for action, so I don't want them to draw two extra cards. Uh, and then hopefully next turn I can Narset and then the turn after potentially Days Undoing. Uh, wow, I'm really happy that came down <laughs> the turn before I play Narset. All right, well, you know, their deck is really, really good at top decking, and they have a ton of mana. So, you know, and we don't have protection right now. Um, so things are not in the clear for us yet. Although that doesn't help them. And now I'm in this awkward spot where them drawing one card might be better for them than me drawing seven cards, basically. Uh, all right, so let's get the Force of Will. Uh, Ponder will find a land. See, I told you. Um, and then I'm going to Teferi. Uh, I guess I can bounce a monolith, like, why not? I could steal a monolith, ooh. Obviously, I would never force a monolith here. Um, so here's the thing. I'm, I think I'm going to just wheel next turn in my opponent's draw step. So I'm fine forcing this. And I'm happy I waited uh, a little bit on the days I'm doing. I could also just play Uro this turn. Now, because underneath it is Swords, so I don't think that's worth it. I could play Dak, Dak myself, draw two, discard Uro on Swords. And then next turn, it's like Forrester next turn's play. Yeah, okay, that seems reasonable. And then, you know, next turn having one extra Planeswalker in play helps a lot. Uh, so, target myself. Yeah, I'll discard the sword. It's just that I can force whatever they end up playing. So I guess I'm saying that I'm going to take two turns to play the days I'm doing. We'll see. Uh, that's fine. Don't care about that one. Well, I guess I might. Uh, yeah. We'll see. I am just going to escape the arrow. Delve away the land so that when I wheel, I don't draw them again. Uh, 
and then I'm gonna get a source of plowshares with the Mystic Sanctuary. Now I still have a Force Blue card, and then now I have a row in play. So I'll go over my thought process a bit. So the reason that I felt like it was fine to wait a few turns for this day's undoing is that they had zero cards in hand, and so you know if I cast the day's undoing and reset, you know they're still drawing one card per turn, and so it's not actually riskier from my point of view um you know because they're still drawing one card per turn either way so it's just better to wait until i have a more concrete board position before i get rid of you know the arrow in my graveyard or the deck fade in my hand etc etc Now there's no reason to plus stack here because I'm wheeling my hand, so I would just steer, steal a monolith. And that's fine, they can tap it. Right, so in the draw, I will undoing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would untap the monolith. All right, cool. Nice, so Eldrazi Post, definitely a difficult matchup, uh, I feel. Uh, this is pretty good against them. From the Ashes is also pretty good against them. I don't think this is very good. Like the drain for two is just not relevant. Like all their creatures are three power and plus, and so it just feels like a weak and effective way of doing such a thing. So I think I just, Leaving this, I'm not even sure what to cut. I guess my mana's not under siege, but my one drops might be, so I'll turn a growth. I'll even one force negation. Okay, false drum's obviously bad. It's a good card to cut. Hmm. I think Terminus might be difficult to set up. Because, like, they are not the Eldrazi aggro version that always has creatures in play. They're much more controlling. So I can see this rotting in my hand. So it's either this or, like, another abundant growth to help play around Chalice of the Void a bit. Um, all right, let's get rid of a growth, actually. My decision making here is that, like I said, I, I think the matchup's not good. So having a higher variance card in my deck is better. Uh, sure, we'll keep. The same we do have to force a turn one chalice. Um, they don't have one. Always a good thing. Well, let's hope they draw creatures. I'm gonna leave in, I'm gonna keep the whole creature basically uh, instead of the ponder. <laughs> Yikes. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sort this. And I'm going to discard my land card because I know there's a land on top, and I just won't fetch. 
um, I think I value having the swords in my hand. Uh, I mean, I'm likely to just get Ulamont in turn four. Mm. Somehow, the same thing. I guess it's one turn later, but yeah. Game's over. <laughs> Game's over. Go home. Yeah, this matchup should be atrocious for us. They just have all this fast mana, and I'm not playing Wasteland. Or it's not it's not fast mana, but you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'll keep playing just because I I can swords this Ulamog, technically. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> all right, game over. <laughs> Woof! What a shellacking. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Oh man, I don't even know if there's anything we do about that. Like, it just, just is what it is. Uh, I'll bring in the Force Negation and cut the Terminus. I do play a good, healthy amount of non creature spells. Alright, yeah. Hope to get lucky. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a rough one. Well, Uro, Uro is reasonable. Uro removal, cantrips to fill up the graveyard. Yeah. YOLO. Uh, seems good to me. Now, I don't think I would force a Chalice here. Just because I have a threat already. Yeah, I'll let this go. I have, I have Hard Archive removal in the deck. Uh, and I have a threat already. So I just want to... Shoot, what was the card under? It was a land, right? I don't think I want this land. Um... We'll see. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, turn one Chalice didn't do that. Oh! I lied! <laughs> I don't need to force this at all. Um, we could get forest just to, yeah. You know, uh, in case we draw like, uh, this will just get drop, I guess. So this would be the fourth card, fifth card. So I think I just throw this into the chalice. So I can escape the arrow. I value, like, there's a few ways to go about this. I could say, oh, I'm likely to force here. Uh, well, okay, so I'm playing this. I'm likely to force here. So I'll have six cards next turn anyway. They didn't have Thought Not Seer. Um, would I force a Smasher here? I think that's the question. I think the answer might be no. Right, like, I just play this 6-6. Six, six. But maybe I would and just rate. I don't know. That's very difficult. So if the Chalice leaves the game at some point later on, I'd rather have Swords in my hand than Abundant Harvest. So I would definitely sacrifice this right now. I could, but swords I could do on their end step. So I can wait, you know, to decide if I need to use it. Because, like, if I force something this turn, obviously. Um, wow, that's fucking annoying. That's so annoying.
I can't. I can't. There's no way. It's it's just annoying because they name Scalding Turn, and then I can't fetch and play Uro. They might name Nurse it. Yeah, the name turn. I suppose I could have played the turn out. I wanted my opponent to be less sure if I could play the arrow, but I suppose it gets punished by exactly Sorceress by Glass. Uh, okay, so I have another blue card now. So I'm just gonna play Narset, turn it into a card, uh, and then hopefully they kill it. Um, okay, so Dak Faden's pretty reasonable here. This just says, yeah, so it hits both sides. Is it reasonable here or is it just force negation? We'll take the force negation. Yeah, because stealing either of these doesn't really help me that much right now. Yeah, so definitely forcing this and pitching the one mana spell. It's a pretty good one. I think it takes a backseat to Uro this turn, but certainly next turn. Yeah, I'm very happy I have this Force Negation in hand and not the Dak Faden. It's just Dak is a little too slow on this board. I don't even have. Yeah, whatever, we'll put it into play. I didn't even have red mana for attack. So I think next turn what's going to happen is I'm going to play the EE on zero, crack it. Uh, what's happening? What is happening? Um, I don't know, I value my arrow getting to attack. <laughs> Because it would, with no graveyard, it, it would just take way too long. Ooh, and now this taps for black. Not that that's super relevant, but it's better than it tapping for colorless for sure. Um, okay, so boop. Uh, X is currently zero. Yes. Uh, I will sacrifice it now. I'm gonna attack. Before I'll draw the card first. It's just like proper sequencing, uh, and then white. Yeah, okay. So then I will swords this so that they can't block and get the free card. And so this is annoying if they have another chalice that like I'm not playing my one drop this turn, but. I think this is more mana efficient. And also, uh, if they have Chalice, like as one of their last three cards. Um... <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Uh, if they have Chalice as one of the last three cards, like then that's not a card that they have that's killing me, basically. All right. You see. You see the impending doom. Um... So I will attack with Uro first, but even though I have six mana, I think I'm likely to abundant harvest for a land. That's actually a pretty good name from my opponent's part. 
All right, well, whatever. <laughs> so this gets red, but it's the last basic in the deck. So I'm basically losing all four of my lands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know what? That's absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. This looks like the concession lag. Yes, let's go. Oh my god, what a crazy match. We I think we got really lucky there. They played a chalice, an embering forest, and then two of this, and then just a bunch of lands. Yeah, that was I was pretty fortunate for us. Like I said, I think this is probably a pretty tough matchup just because we don't have good interaction for what they're trying to do. But uh sometimes destroying all their lands is a good way to win the game. You heard it here first. All right. We'll see you back for round three. All right. <clears throat> we are here for round three, the ultimate round. The fans loose, but I think all my hands with this deck are loose. Any four color deck is just going to need to make some loose keeps and you're going to have to be okay with that. I'm going to bluff stifle. Uh, plays into wasteland a smidge, but my deck is not good at playing around that. The way you play around that is you have a higher win quantity, basically. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm going to save the brainstorm for a turn or two. If they go second wasteland and I don't draw a blue source, then... You know, so be it. Hmm. Oh, so I think I, I might know what deck my opponent is playing. I think it's like some sort of uh, team or ramp strategy. I think that's too good at this point in the game. Ugh, gross. Okay. Oh, we're behind. <laughs> uh, that's actually a pretty good draw. It's a really good draw, actually. Uh, Yeah, I really, I really like this card. Um, so I'm going to, like, so I could have played the Apprentice and then tried to untap and play like Harvest and Brainstorm and all this nonsense. But I think what I'm going to do is play Narset on three to shut down their library. Um, hopefully, that's like the goal, basically. And then the turn after that, I can play Apprentice with mana up to like cast instance, basically, and guarantee that it. Guarantee, quote unquote, that it gets value. It gets triggers. We guarantee the triggers. We don't guarantee the value. Um, right, yeah. So they're representing hard cast force negation, but I mean, I have no recourse. Uh, so let's just get a tundra. Because they, they could also have things like Lightning Bolt, you know? Um, they could also have things like Brazen Bar. If they Lightning Bolt this, I'll just take the two for one. It's fine. Um, and it looks like they did not have that necessarily. I don't know what they're doing at this point, quite frankly. They could have... This deck could be playing Bone Crusher Giant. I'm a little less sure of what was happening. The list I saw uh, for like this Rug Control deck that was posted the other day did not have um, Sylvan Library in it, I don't think. We'll see. We will see what happens. Okay, well, 
We have an answer for that, which is good. So I think I start by minusing Narset to look for like a force type effect. Perfect. Perfect. Let me switch this while their Caracas is down. If we draw a land, we can play it and then brainstorm to hopefully find another land. Perfect. All right. See, this is why you keep speculative hands, because everything always works out always. <laughs> uh, and I would probably not play the brainstorm in step. It just gets better when you get to untap and shuffle away your bad cards. But man, this Apprentice. So like I said in the intro, I think 20 lands is a little bit too loose to be playing multiple. But like when this card pops off, it pops off. I have to be honest. Um, right, let's lead on Brainstorm. That's okay. Um, like I said, 20 lands, not the best for this sort of thing. So I think what I'm going to do is put back land. The Uro is interesting because they have the Caracas sitting here. I think it's... Is it better than Ice Fang? So I'm going to start by shuffling away the arrow. I'm still not sure what my opponent is fully doing over there, so I'm just going to hold back the two damage. This could be needlessly um, you know, conservative, basically. All right, so I'm going to brainstorm because I know that there's a land for this guy to hit underneath. Eh, like I could force that, but I don't care. It's it's done its job. It drew two cards and traded with a swords. Uh, so I don't think I could want anything more out of that. It's a nice little three for one. Um, okay, so this goes back. I mean, probably just both the lands go back, right? I think five is enough. Five is plenty. We'll draw more lands. If we need to, we can harvest for more lands. Harvest is really good, guys. Uh, let's just get the island. Oh, that was bad. We should have gotten Savannah so that um, if they wasteland us off white. All right, so <laughs> because I messed, so I messed up here. I should have kept either kept one of the lands or uh, gotten another white source. Because of that, uh, I don't have, and this can't fetch Savannah. Yeah, that was very very loose on my part. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm gonna do this just because it can potentially fetch. They don't know it doesn't get white. This mana base is certainly a work in progress as well. Um, after this match, I'll have my kind of conclusion thoughts, and I will definitely talk about chimps and changes I would make to this deck after playing it once. Yeah, sure. Or playing it through, you know, a set of matches, I should say. So 
This can fetch me a six inch root too, which is kind of why I what did I reveal also? Uh, so I revealed an arrow and then the tarn. Cool. Oh, the sanctuary's right here. What am I talking about? All right, guys, it's too early. I've only had half a cup of coffee. <laughs> Obviously, the star set is completely taking over the game. And I think I just play the whole picture and start pressuring their life total. I should have. Hmm. This is actually not bad. They chose. Oh no, they did shuffle. Never mind. What was I about? Uh, if they had chosen to not shuffle the library, then force them to cast this force of will. The uh, like cracking the fetch is pretty good for me. I'm okay with this too. This is not worth fighting over, especially the biggest thing is that I'm so, <laughs> uh, the heck, um, like the way my hand is set up, I just want to hard cast both of these or all three of these cards. Uh, so there's no way I'm going to not do that. My upkeep, I will fetch for basic mountain to give this death touch and thin my library a tiny bit. There's also an arrow on the bottom of my library that I would not mind redrawing. Well, this is just life, right? I don't draw the card, so. I can't convince myself. All right, Ponder's a great pickup here. Um, yeah, growth is pretty good. <laughs> I just want to. Uh, An extra white source, basically. I think leaving a hardcast forest without having to crack the fetch is good because the harvest is a spell. I'm gonna let this resolve. Like, they gain life total, sure. Um, and I might have to jump with my Coatl, but I think the force is too valuable. I'm gonna start with this, because this is less uh, decision-making. Just gonna get a spell. Uh, okay. Swords, it's it's reasonable. Uh, Uro is exactly, I think, what I want here. I'm gonna take myself off of Hardcast Force for a turn. Uh, and I, I will fetch away the two lands. I don't think I need them. Oh, that's really awkward. Do I not have vegetables left in the deck? I have the savannah, but the tarn can't get the savannah. Okay, awkward. Well, 
awkward. Uh, no. So basically, I think the only difficult part at this point is like figuring out how to win the game. I think the answer is we're going to Days Undoing, obviously. Hopefully, Days Undoing plus Gyre Reach will be enough. Although, man, this is actually tough. So what would I not want to draw? I'm just going to double swords here. because I'd be going to this card anyway. I suppose I could have waited for them to bounce my Uro. Yeah, okay, that was a little loose. It's kind of a gambit, huh? Sure. Because it's like if they don't balance my arrow, I have to start going to discard. Um, but if they do, then I get to preserve the swords in my hand. I think they would not have bounced the arrow, though, because they saw the swords to plowshares. So this at least is my thought process. Okay. <clears throat> my opponent doesn't realize how precarious my situation is with regards to winning the game. Which... You know, I'll take. <laughs> so this is definitely a Field of the Dead, Pardon me, we'll Titan Ramp deck. Um, so I want all this stuff. I will take the From the Ashes. Uh, and then I think one Surgical is fine, just because we have the Swords to deal with the Arrow, like if they manage to get it going. I will... Trim on the swords though, and then trim on some forces. What else to trim is difficult. Uh, maybe Kowadal's a little bit underpowered. They did have Wasteland, so I don't want to cut a growth. I don't want to trim on the land. God, this mana base is atrocious, huh? <laughs> Someone should have talked me out of this. Um, God, but I have to make two cuts or one cut. Apprentice was so good there. It's a three for one and set up my mana for the rest of the game. Obviously, all the draw stoppers are really good. We're definitely trying to combo them because they go a little bit bigger than us. Ah. Ah. All right. I'm going to take out one Abundant Growth. And cement 61. Don't yell at me. <laughs> I'm sure this is just like my ego trying to justify it, but I do think that the 61 cards is not as terrible in post board games just because, like, you've cut every single bad card from your deck, ideally. So, just like, you know, seeing more cards 
or seeing good cards is like fine. I don't know. Probably terrible <laughs> rationalization, but it's the one I'm going with. Uh, so this hand is fine. I'm going to fetch a basic. Um, yeah, Apprentice and Brainstorm are pretty good. I think it's going to be turn 2 Coatl, turn 3 Narset, then turn 4 Apprentice plus, you know, spells. Um, if I need to draw the swords too, I can just play the Savannah next turn and Coatl, which is nice. I think it's one of the big differences between Apprentice and like Life from Alum is that, you know, I would I would consider running Loam out on turn two to get two fetches back to my hand, but Apprentice I think is better later, a little bit later, which is good and bad. I think Apprentice has a higher ceiling for sure. Um, I think I don't want. Uh, they could be playing Hall Breacher. I'm going to leave this out, expose it to Wasteland. There's like some push and pull because we saw a growth spiral in their deck. Uh, and so if they didn't have growth spiral and, you know, they're just passing their turn two and like, we kind of run back what happened um, last turn. Like, that's fine for me. It's just that if they had Grow Spiral plus Wasteland, then they're pulling ahead, where, whereas I'm falling behind. Um, which one am I enchanting? Probably this one. It means I can't Swords this turn, but it lets me cast Narset off this basic mountain, which I view as valuable, given that my opponent is a Wasteland strategy. Uh, sure. I don't know what to do. Uh, well, this makes it a lot easier. Now I'll just play Narset. Uh, I should source this now. Oh, I can't. All right, well. <laughs> sure. So I kind of expect the Narset to get forced them to escape the arrow. And then for me to swords it. And I'm a little bit down on that exchange. Yeah. Uh, I still think putting this here was correct. But obviously, it played out pretty poorly because now they just get to escape the arrow.
I could have played a little bit risky and played the apprentice and then fetched for like a tundra to swords. I felt that I was not likely to need that, basically. I was less likely to need the extra value of Apprentice and more likely to want to have Veil in case it doesn't resolve. What is the thought process? So now I'm trying to think if I want to brainstorm and set to potentially like set up a guaranteed hit on Apprentice next turn. It seems a little loose. Might have to brainstorm to uh, stop whatever's coming this turn, but. Just thinking if I want to play out this, or if I want to potentially try to set up a good, better like Flusterstorm turn next turn. I'm going to try and set up a better Flusterstorm turn next turn. I'm very likely getting Primeval Titan. Yeah. So we'll let them get the lands first. I imagine they're getting two Field of the Dead. Okay. Maybe they only play one. Maybe one's in hand. It's possible. Uh, and there ends up going to sort this. If they force back, I have Lost Storm. Alright, so this is going to look for a uh, non land. And then do I want to shuffle back this arrow before the Growth resolves. I think hitting Uro is probably my best shot for uh, 
not dying. So I actually will uh, shuffle back the two. Because I, I wouldn't mind hitting Ponder or Uro. Clothis is an interesting one, for sure. Probably a little slow for what's uh, what's going on here. Uh, my opponent's deck is definitely trying to go over the top of mine. They did have the second one in hand. What did I reveal off the, uh, okay, so that was the top card, so I don't know anything about the bottom of my library. Uh, basically, I'm very dead. Uh, I will fluster this, just kind of convert it into lands, basically. I could have potentially cycled Veil first, but they didn't cast a blue card this turn. All right, Teferi and Prince Barney Commander on the bottom. Okay. So I think I want to... I'm likely going to shuffle in my upkeep. Well, maybe not. Maybe I need to draw. Huh. Yeah, okay, actually, I take that back. I really need to draw the From the Ashes this turn. Um. So I'm going to let this happen and hope to peel that card, basically. Uh, or was a good pickup? I'm going to target the loam. Uh, if they had like an instant speed way to draw cards, like yeah, then they have that. They have two lands, two fetch lands in hand that we know about, and then three unknowns. Could be another swords. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, wouldn't have mattered, I don't have a blue card. Gonna put brainstorm on top. I have these lands in hand to shuffle away. I hope I don't have to force pitch blue card or anything, basically. If they cast a blue spell before something I need to counter, I can veil into the brainstorm and then brainstorm, hopefully find a blue card, shuffle away these two, and then you know force. Yeah. <laughs> No. Uh, man, that sucks. It, it sucks that we drew this naturally and didn't have the opportunity to fetch for it. So bye-bye, Brainstorm. Obviously, this is still required. <laughs> and I assume it's just getting Power Blasted or something. Yeah. All right. 
Our opponent's deck that goes over the top of us went over the top of us. I think we need another... It was really just the library. Like We needed to find either the uh, Gust-type card. Yeah, right. I have taken out the Terminus. Uh, I do think that you should cut the Terminus because in a situation like this, like even if I kill the board for a turn, it doesn't... You know, it doesn't affect anything. We're still gonna lose those long games. Um, maybe I just want the fourth force of will. Stop like the bigger things they're doing. All right, let's try that. I still think two swords is fine. It sucks that like it usually is trading down on like value, but. I don't know if they play Hole Breacher for one, and uh, and now let's let's turn down one swords. I think that's fine. Again, I feel like this is probably a tough matchup for us. Like we have Surgical and Relic and Clothis for the arrow, so I think going down to one swords is acceptable. Uh, this hand is also pretty good. Another set plus Force of Will. And then we have ways to follow it up. I'm gonna wait for turn two to brainstorm because I don't have like that many impactful two drops. Uh, well now I might just wait longer because I already have the land that I need. Uh, I will brainstorm now. If I find like something better to do with my turn, or like more protection, that's pretty good. Uh, I will get rid of the surgical, and all these cards are so good. I think I'm just gonna redraw it and then. So I'm gonna leave up the whole breacher this turn because if they growth spiral, then I get to nab it. And because I have one non-basic, I'm just gonna fetch for another non-basic, probably just get a bulk with this. Perfect. <laughs> the treasure token here is also not irrelevant, just like letting me do more things with my turn. If they force, obviously I'm forcing back. That's not a question. They do still get to put a land into play, but they don't draw the card. So do I care? Do I take my two for one here, basically, is the question. Um, and then potentially try to like Narset with Force next turn. No, I think, because if DAC resolves, then I can just DAC plus my opponent, and that's really, really good for me. And if they kill it, and then I'm also in very good shape. Um, sure. So I have two lands, three unknowns. Although this stops me from dacking my opponent this turn, I suppose. Well, so they get to draw Loam and one card, and then have to discard. No, yeah, it's definitely just a. Uh... I think it's just Narset, and then. Oh, how does this work? Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so. 
with Hole Breacher in play, they could take their draw step for the turn and then just dredge Loam for like a future draw. With Narset in play, kind of both avenues are locked out for them. So I'm just going to play the Narset. And this is nice too, is like insurance. Where it's like, okay, Hole Breacher dies. Well, now I have Narset in play. Um, I will take the Brainstorm. Yeah, so now, now there's no like way they can finick loam around uh, these guys. Because either they dredge it for turn, and if they take their draw step, Hole Breacher or if they take draws after that, Hole Breacher prevents it. Um, and if they did not dredge, then they would have already drawn one card for turn, so notice it stops any additional draws. So they have Loam Land, three unknowns. And I have forcible. Uh, yeah, so this does not work the way they want it to. Unless they're trying to get lands into play. Actually, that's reasonable. They probably do, do just want to get lands into play. So next turn, what I'm likely to do, because there's no loam in the graveyard anymore, well, there might be actually after this uh, turn. If there, was, if there was no Loam in the graveyard after the turn, I think what I would do is deck my opponent. As it stands, that might not be what I want to do. We can start with minusing Narset and see where that leads. Right? I might force this just so they have fewer cards in hand to discard. Tough decisions. No, I think I'm going to deck myself looking for, uh, like, from the ashes and force will and, and things of this nature. Ooh. That helps a lot. Um, okay, so this. This. Uh, take a quick look at their deck. And then do I have the mana to do everything I want? Probably, right? Wow, that's such a disgusting turn. Holy shit. Okay, so I get to dack them. They discard two cards, I get two treasure tokens. I get to From the Ashes them. Holy moly. That's insane. Actually insane. And now they just have lands in hand, right? They discarded Brainstorm Growth Spiral. Yeah! Woo Holy moly, what a turn! Good lord. Good lord, that was an insane turn. Jeez. All right. This deck was sweet, man. All right. So I will be right back with the summary and like changes I would make in my thoughts. Uh, so yeah, let's go to that. All right, so this deck, this deck was pretty fun. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, had some pretty incredible games there for sure. Uh, and both of them, from the ashes, was an absolute house. Uh, we did play against like big mana decks that were weak to it though. Uh, so obviously, it's gonna be good there. Uh, so I think some thoughts and takeaways. The mana was really bad. Like we got to cast all our spells eventually, but it felt. 
It didn't feel smooth. It didn't feel clean. Growth helped a bit. Harvest was good. But I think all in all, the animates might be a little misbuilt. Uh, this card felt a little too cute. I wanted a non-Uro quote-unquote win con. Uh, and this, you know, plus our set does that. But I think... Well, first of all, that doesn't actually kill the opponent. So I still would need to attack with creatures. So I think this doesn't actually do what I want it to. And then in addition, you know, four colors with a colorless land on your deck is a lot. And then probably felt like I had one too few uh, white sources in my deck. I only have two here. Uh, that was like something I noticed kind of very early on is that, you know, I have four white cards in my main deck and only two red cards. And yet I have uh, a basic uh, mountain, but not a basic plains. So I think the first change I would make is cut this and add a snow-covered plains. Uh, so let's do that now. The harvests were, I guess, uh, not changes, but like thoughts on the deck. The harvests were really, really good. Just like setting up your early mana if you need it, and then um, just like cycling into a spell later on in the game is really good. Also, you know, being able to clear your brainstorms or your ponders you know, you put two lands on top of your brainstorm, and then if you don't have a fetch land in play, you just get to harvest, name non-land, and push through that. Um, that did come up in one of our games. We got to put back a spell we didn't want, and then harvest for land. Uh, so this this card was really, really good, both as a standalone card and combined with uh, the other cantrips in your deck. I think one thing this might center as well with is Sylvan Library, which is a card I'm not playing. I don't know if I'd want to play such a card, but it's another thing to think about. Uh, don't sleep on this card. Like I said in the intro, you know, it's if you're leaning on this for a mana source, it's rough with like your colors like Wasteland and Field of Dead type stuff. But in a deck that doesn't use those things, which, you know, Bant slash Red Control is definitely one of those archetypes, one of those shells, this card is insanely powerful. Um, and I think it reared its head in the games for sure. The Prismari Command was really, really impressive for me. It didn't come up that often, but... You know, the turn that it killed the artifact, the chalice, and made a token was really, really good. Um, and then, you know, it was blue, so it pitched a couple times. And then we never really saw it got to, you know, do the mine rot mode, where, you know, you have this in play and you target your opponent. Uh, but it basically had a similar effect. You know, Dak Faden played a similar role in that last game, where if Dak Faden was a Prismari command, it basically would have played out the exact same um, on that last turn. So this command is impressive to me. I want to try more. That's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the games were pretty crazy, so I had a lot of fun filming it, and I will catch you guys soon. Bye.